Oh, hey everybody, and welcome back. I'm here to offer some writing advice, and today's subject is a Chekhov's gun. Now, to quote Wikipedia, Chekhov's gun is a dramatic principle that states that every element in the story must be necessary, and irrelevant elements should be removed. Elements should not appear to make false promises by never coming into play. So basically, Chekhov's gun means if you're going to introduce an item, uh, an object, uh, or a weapon, for example, a gun, yeah, in a story or a film or a play or anything of that sort, it should have some kind of payoff at the end. Now, this is not a hard and fast rule. This is considered a theory of sort, but it is generally a good idea if you're going to have something that is noteworthy happen or an object or something you pay attention to in the story, it should have some kind of payoff at the end. So, for example, in the movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the main character comes with a flamethrower in the beginning of the movie um, because he's filming scenes for a movie that he's making. The main character is an actor. You may not think uh, it's going to come back, but at the end, the main character's house, uh, there's a commotion going on, and he gets the flamethrower to defend himself against the intruders. So the flamethrower comes back into play and fulfills, basically, the role of Chekhov's gun. It was introduced earlier in the story, and that comes back at the end for a payoff. No, like I was saying, this is not a hard and fast rule. Um, there are lots of times you can introduce an item or a thing or a topic, idea, uh, into a story and not necessarily have it pay off in a certain way at the end. But if you are going to put focus or attention, especially for a long time, uh, on something and not make it pay off afterwards, it could seem kind of odd that doesn't happen. And a good example of a film doing this many, many times, in fact, is The Room. Now, <clears throat> The Room is a legendary film that requires a video on its own. But let me use two examples. Example number one. One of the main characters in the movie is encountered with um, a violent person while on the roof of, a, of an apartment building. And so the main character bought drugs from this other violent character... And the violent character threatens him with the gun and throws him on the floor. And it's a whole scenario. And so uh, that's what happens. The uh, the person, the main character that bought the drugs is pleading for his life because he thinks he's gonna get he's gonna be killed by this uh, other character, the violent character, uh, whose name is Chris R. Well, that whole confrontation is going on. And meanwhile, Tommy Wiseau's character and the other main characters walk into the scenario, into the scene, and see all this. And then they, uh, you know, do a citizen's arrest on Chris R., who is the uh, the armed uh, character, the uh, person that, that was asking for the money. And so we think, oh, this is, you know, a bad situation. Why was one of the main characters buying drugs from Chris R.? And you think, well, this is something going on here. You know, it, it's a very important scene in a way in the film. It seems like it's gonna set up something. Maybe one of the, maybe that character whose name is Denny, uh, who bought the drugs, maybe he needed the money to pay for medical supplies or for school or for something like that. It makes you think about what the situation is. But that never comes back again. Then it's never never addressed or never uh, explained. So. And that's it. So uh, this scene just kind of happens in the film. And then the rest of the movie keeps going. And this scene doesn't contribute to the plot or doesn't do anything at all in any way or form to the rest of the film. Um, so that's one example of not doing Chekhov's gun correctly. As a matter of fact, not doing it at all. You, you introduce this this uh, story plot or story a theme or a topic of uh, this interaction between Chris R., who's demanding the money, and Denny who owes him the money, and there's a whole situation where the, all the main characters are involved, and then nothing happens afterwards. So it, it kind of just a random event that occurs in the film, and the film keeps on going. Now, another uh, situation that's similar like this, where something's introduced and never addressed again in the same film of The Room, uh, one of the main characters is talking to her mother in the living room of the house. Well, the mother of this main character tells her that she has breast cancer, and that uh, she's concerned well, they finish talking, they leave the house, and then the movie continues going forward. And that's it. No, uh, it's not addressed ever again. It's not. It doesn't set up anything. It makes you think it is, but it doesn't actually do anything. 
no, nothing, you know, like nothing to apply. Like, oh, you know, maybe Tommy Wiseau's character, Johnny, can help pay for treatment or it's going to be difficult for, you know, um, you know, for them or, you know, or nothing like that. It just doesn't do anything. They talk about it. And they, just, they just, you know, go about their day, you know, and, and just it comes up and never address again. Uh, you know, it, so I guess. Uh, so that's one example, uh, another example of uh, not doing Chekhov's gun correctly, or uh, should I say, uh, is setting something up and then never comes back again. Going back to the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the flamethrower is introduced earlier in the film. It comes back later on in the film, and it kind of does a full circle. The main character uses the flamethrower that was supposed to be a prop one of his movies to actually uh, defend himself against the uh, intruders. So it comes back and makes a nice, you know, uh, payoff. Now another uh, example of doing Chekhov's gun is in the movie Gremlins. In the movie, the main character, in the beginning of the movie, he's going about his business. But in the background, we see swords on the wall. Well, later on in the film, when the Gremlins are attacking and there's chaos and all that, um, the main character grabs the sword from the wall and uses it to attack one of the gremlin creatures. And so that's basically it. Uh, basically, if you're going to introduce something, especially if you put a lot of focus and attention to it, it should have some kind of payoff for it to seem satisfactory. Um, now, this is not a hard and fast rule, like I was saying, but is generally recommended. The way I think of it, I think of it like this. Uh, this rule doesn't mean you have to add a bunch of things into your story uh, and then create a payoff for it in the end. Uh, think of it more like this. Uh, let's say you're writing um, a slasher film or horror film or something like that. And then at the end of the story, the main character uses, uh, let's say, an axe to defend themselves against the attacker. So they get the axe and they use it against the, uh, the villain, against the murderer, against the, the monster or whatever. Um, and that's how the story ends. Uh, well, in order to make it a little bit better, uh, let's do something like this. Maybe earlier in the film, the main character is uh, chopping wood and cutting down trees and, you know, uh, collecting wood because it's wintertime and they want to do a fire indoors. And so just the simple addition of a scene of the main character cutting wood in the beginning and just using that axe and leaving that axe in the backyard. Now, later on in the story... They can grab that same axe and use it to defend themselves against the monster. It's just these little things like this that make it seem full circle and they give it give the story a little bit more, um, um, make it feel a little bit more complete in a way. Um, so that's one example how to do it. So the way I see it is that if you're going to have something at the end of the of the story or towards the end of the story, um, you can make it a little bit more significant. By giving it a backstory of a of a sort earlier in the in the movie or the story, the play or anything like that. Well, that's it for today. Uh, if you'd like to know more, there's some links down below about Chekhov's gun and various other topics of that nature. Yeah, I'm curious to know what your uh, favorite usage of uh, Chekhov's gun is in the movie or play. If you have any ideas of that sort, uh, feel free to comment them below. Uh, and I'm curious because. Uh, what else is out there that maybe I missed that I'm not too sure of. All right, well, take care, everybody.